मेहरबान है Back on, ladies and gentlemen, it's phase one polling day, 19th of April at 9:30 a.m. Coimbatore or Kovai, the big important constituency in Tamil Nadu, constituency number 20, has seen only 3.28 percent voter turnout. So, are people coming out early in the morning, or will they come out later towards the evening? We have to wait and watch. But it's steady polling in Kairana, 12.45 percent at 9:30 a.m. in Kairana. And uh, 77.5% in 2019 overall voter turnout in Jorhat is already 12.27% at 9:30 a.m. Haridwar, which saw nearly 69% in 2019 overall voter turnout, at, uh, is about 12.5% at 9:30 a.m. Kuch Bihar is 15.26% at 9:30 a.m. It had an 84% turnout early, early in 2019. Tripura has seen a 15% voter turnout. In the high, uh, nearly 82% in 2019, 16.53% in Balaghat. Again, 77% voter turnout overall in 2019. And in Nagpur, again, Nitin Gadkari's constituency there, 16.41%. Last time around, it was just 54.9% overall in 2019, but so far, 16.41%. So, different reflections in terms of voter turnout. It's the weakest. In Coimbatore, where it's supposed to be a tricornered fight and a very intense one, with the BJP trying to pitch in an Anna Malai and a lot at stake. The literally the BJP throwing the kitchen sink, and so are the ADMK and the DMK. But we'll move away from uh, Tamil Nadu and we'll focus on some of the other states. Twelve out of the twenty-five seats in Rajasthan are seeing a direct Congress versus BJP fight. We'll try and go across to our reporters in Rajasthan to see what's the voter turnout before we bring it in to our guests here in studio. You, along with, of course, Rahul Shivshankar, our consulting editor and managing editor, CNN News 18, Zaka Jacob, on the magic wall. And there's some extra magic on the magic wall this time around. But quickly, with the reporters, gentlemen, first, Arun Dhanta in Jaipur and Yash joining us from Alwar. We'll try and go to both of them in just a bit. Let's bring it back in, Rajasthan. Yeah, so the phase one <coughs> is an interesting one. Of course, the BJP swept Rajasthan 25 out of 25 last time around. But this gentleman, Hanuman Beniwal, who used to be with the NDA before and now is fighting with the India Alliance, he's sort of switched uh, positions. He, of course, won from Nagore the last time around. There are also, I want to add this other filter as well, where the BJP has changed its sitting MP. So in Churu, in Junjunu, look at this. Out of the 11 seats that are voting, uh, the BJP has changed in seven seats, it has changed its sitting MP, despite having such a massive lead, almost a 20% vote share lead over the uh, India Alliance. So let me just go through what those constituencies are in Ganganagar, uh, in Churu. This is Rahul Kaswan. He was denied the ticket this time. Uh, there are a lot of people there who believe that he was unfairly <coughs> denied the ticket. So Rahul Kaswan feels uh, that he should have got the ticket again. Will, will a section of the BJP voters, you know, back away and uh, back uh, again, Junjunu, the candidate there was changed. These two seats, Junjunu seat and the Churu seat, watch out for these two seats because of the internal dynamics there. From uh, uh, Bharatpur, again, Ranjita Kohli had won last time, the candidate has been changed. From Dosa, again, Sachin Pilot hails from Dosa. Priyanka Gandhi had a joint rally for the India Alliance, the Congress candidate from Dosa. Again, watch out for whether uh, the Dosa candidate can take the seat back from the BJP. And then Karoli Dholpur, uh, where Manoj Rajori of the BJP had won last time. Also in Jaipur uh, city itself, uh, Ramcharan Bohra had won last time. They've changed the candidate. So if you look at it, the BJP has changed candidates. And of course, this is part of the BJP strategy. Nalan knows this very well. Uh, right from Mr. Modi's time as Gujarat CM, about a third of the sitting MPs and MLAs used to be changed. But in this case, one or two of those constituencies, certainly in Churu and in Junjunu, uh, there has been local level rebellion against the incumbent being changed. 
That's true, Raka. In, in that whole Shikavati region, there is a problem for the BJP. Uh, uh, there is resentment on the ground. And while, uh, like for example, with, with, with Devinder Jajaria, uh, you know, Modi uh, went there and he made the, so he repeated the slogan, Yaha par Devinder, Delhi mein, mein Narendra, Narendra, right? So, yeah. so the Prime Minister has put his own, uh, he, you know, he's fronting the campaign, of course, in Rajasthan. But in Rajasthan, the BJP has a challenge. And I think there's a larger point here that the BJP maxed out in Rajasthan in 14 and 19, 19 yeah. but this time, um, see all the seats that are going to poll this time, I actually think that the, this is by far the strongest phase for the opposition. Correct. A across the board. Even if you leave aside Tamil Nadu, which was which was the DMK sweep yes, last right. time, there is a gap, as Rahul has been pointing out, between, uh, if you look at the vote share differences, these are the places, there are at least four or five seats in Rajasthan, where there's a tough contest. Hmm. Then it's a question of, to what extent can the Modi factor override the local, uh, the local, hmm. uh, the local division over there? PM uh, Modi on the ticket becomes yeah. interesting. We just have, we'll discuss that. We've got Yash joining us from Alwar. So let's try and understand what's happening in Alwar. Yash, uh, how is the turnout in Alwar, voter turnout in Alwar? If we look at the numbers also, uh, the voter turnout in the entire Rajasthan, Alwar is reporting the highest voter turnout as per the latest data. In fact, people have also started to trickle in at the voting centres. You can see, in fact, uh, since morning, since 7am, there is a steady movement of people here in Alwar. In fact, we visited a number of voting centres and in fact, uh, people are actually getting out and in fact, they are voting. In fact, when we spoke to Bhupendra Yadav also, the only thing he had to say is that people should come out and vote and that would be the real celebration of democracy. One very thing, why I think that Alwar is actually, uh, people of Alwar are actually stepping out and voting. One of the reasons is that uh, there are many initiatives which have been taken by the local authorities over here. In fact, i like to show you um, how um, selfie booths have been created. In fact, uh, one very interesting thing is, is that once you cast your vote, you can take a selfie over here and then you can upload it on a given portal and then you will be rewarded a certificate of appreciation. So that is the kind of arrangements which have been made here in Alwar. In fact, it's not just this very um, polling booth, but other polling booths are also seeing such kind of arrangements. So that is why people are actually right. getting out in very large numbers. This, in fact, when we spoke to as you them, just, they were also very much elated to be part of this exercise. Yes, yes as, you, as you were walking past, there were chairs for uh, those who needed support. Wheelchairs were kept. There were ramps which have been kept. The Election Commission has ensured that every polling booth has a waiting area, there are uh, restrooms, there is water available, there is also easy access to those who are uh, divyang and also ensuring that there are places for uh, waiting rooms. If there is, uh, the polling booths are overtly crowded, people can wait and some protection from the sun wherever possible. So that's that's key. We've got uh, Mr. Veer Sangvi and also Smita Prakash of ANI joining us uh, this morning on the broadcast. Namaste, Jayan. Thank you for joining uh, Joining us on this uh, continuous uh, broadcast, special broadcast, as uh, we bring you the elections, phase one of Lok Sabha polling, April 19. PM Modi on the ticket. How big is this and how much of a vote share bump does PM Modi on the ticket bring? We just bring that on because in every campaign, every rally, the PM has said, Aapka ek ek vote sida mujhe aega. And this is something he said back in 2019 and he said, he's underlining that in every rally, in every constituency that he's visiting. Rahul, yeah. I think we have to break this phase up into three themes if you have to analyze it. The first theme is where the BJP has won whether it will hold those seats, the 36 seats that neither the Congress, neither the BJP and neither the DMK won, whether the BJP can make inroads there. If this is a Modi wave election, since he's put himself on the ticket, then forget Tamil Nadu for a moment, which is the third aspect of our coverage. You said that Tamil Nadu and Kamal Hassan is casting his vote. Well, yep. there you go. There you go. But, but the fact is that you look at those 36 seats, those 36 seats and Tamil Nadu 39. So there are three lens through which you have to analyze phase one. It's a tricky phase, but I have to make one small point. And I've been yeah. looking up at some historical data on turnout figures. So those numbers at the bottom of our screens are not atypical. In fact, in the first two hours, uh, even in 2019, the average cross phase turnout was about 10 to 12%. So 
let's not look at those 83 percent in one day if we'll ever get there i think we might here, get there. here is here let me just broad base yep. this question to yes. all of you including veer sangwe and smita prakash on our screens right now uh, can we go back to the previous one please and we just stay where the bjp is actually maxed out and if you can go back to that uh, these are the states where the bjp has maxed out 2014, 2019, as the PM predicts 370 for the BJP. Please have a look at the screens. Assam, they have got 9 out of 14 already. Tripura, 2 on 2. Jharkhand, 11 out of 14. Then you've got uh, uh, Chhattisgarh, which is 9 on 11. Uttarakhand, 5 on 5. Haryana, 10 on 10. Delhi, 7 on 7. Himachal, 4 on 4.